So good morning from my side, dear ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Most welcome to this session. And uh, the session has the title, The Paradox. Uh, creditor reduction versus uh, supplier increase. Sounds a little bit crazy, but uh, we have been discussing about creditor reduction now for a long time. And uh, well, maybe it's time to take a new stance on the whole thing. Um, my name is Roland Svenberg. <clears throat> I've been with McAteer for almost six years now. I'm working as a key account manager, trying to support uh, major accounts around Europe. And um, that's why I'm here today, to give you a little bit of outlook in what we are doing and what's next. Um, <clears throat> McAteer as a company was established back in 1999. Uh, we have had a constant growth since then. And uh, right now we are about four, 450 people mainly located in, in Germany, but also in 14 other European countries. Um, Mercatio is, well, in some countries quite well known as a marketplace, a marketplace you can find in internet. Everyone can use it as long as we're talking about B2B customers. And of course, we are also working very uh, intensively with large customers where we have a system connection with their SAP system, uh, whatever, e-procurement system, and so on, on top of that. <clears throat> Let's see if that works. No? Well, make it the simple way. Um, over the years, we have had different presentations here at eWorld. Uh, company RWE talked about the Macadillo as a marketplace a couple of years ago. Bombardier was here last year to talk about the rollout, the importance of a proper rollout that the employees uh, that should work with the system are also been part of the journey and, and get the proper information how to work with it and so on. So right now we are here again to uh, discuss about a new topic and the subtitle could very well be relation between customers and suppliers through digital networking. Well, we are moving very, very rapidly towards a digital network where a lot of communication goes over the network, look at all the social medias and so on. So right now we are discussing about B2B marketplace towards a B2B network. And if we look uh, at the situation currently, we are right now in the transition between, I would say the traditional or classic world procurement world. We have the industry 4.0. We have the digital purchasing being more and more intensively done. We have procurement 4.0 and we have also the social buying. We have a lot of new concepts coming up and, and we don't really know how they should fit into the existing uh, reality. And uh, this is um, a part of the discussion we are going to have the uh, next 30 minutes. Um, <clears throat> What have we been discussing uh, the last couple of years? Well, uh, most of us have been trying to bundle and consolidate the demand. Uh, we are talking about the tail spend, tail and spend demand, which is very complicated. Uh, reduction of creditors. A lot of the companies have thousands of creditors on their system, which costs a fortune to maintain. So that's why we are trying to minimize the number of creditors. We are trying to get rid of maverick buying because that's a pain because, uh, well, the cost is not where you buy this goods, could also be, but at the uh, far end when you're getting the invoices and, and uh, trying to do the payment of the goods and so on. Many companies are also fighting free text orders. It's very easy to write down on a piece of paper what I would like to have, but it's not uh, correct with a, from a processional point of view. <clears throat> Other thing, when we talk about tail and spend, it's very important that the person who needs something is also able to order it. If you move it up the food chain in, in your organization to a purchasing organization for very simple and trivial goods and items, it costs you a fortune before uh, it's really a, a purchase order. So you have to give the people the tools they need 
to make sure that they can order themselves. I mean, look at your private work. You are using web shops every day or every week maybe to get your private goods. And why shouldn't you uh, be using the same kind of tools when you're at work? So this is the way we are looking uh, to in the future. Some <clears throat> have really implemented a good tail and spent uh, management and can do it in a proper way uh, from a process point of view. And some of the companies have fully integrated marketplace where you can really uh, well, focus on, on that and make sure it works very simple, lean and, and, and with low cost. So where do Mercatio come into the picture? Um, we started off 18 years ago as a web shop. The real business model uh, we started 2004 where we recognized that if you're looking for a tail spend, you are not able to negotiate that because you have no negotiation power. We will come back to that. So you'd need a different business model to catch it. And the best price you can get when you talk about tail and spend, it's a market price. So we are not talking about price of the items in general terms. We are talking about process costs. How much does it cost the company to process these demand? Taking it one step further, today we are a well-established e-procurement platform where we even can host the framework agreements from customers. Uh, many uh, people talk about uh, cross-catalog search, uh, background search, and, and like it would be a, a new invention. We are doing this natively since 10 years. Uh, it's possible, and it works very well. So if that's what you're looking for, talk to us. And our vision and what will happen tomorrow will make a new leap into the new future in a fully transactional world where we have uh, a lot of different things going on at the same time. Just a couple of figures, just to show you the dimension of, of the company and what we are doing. We have a lot of customer, customers around Europe. We have very many visitors every day. We have new customers coming onto the platform every day, every week. We have very good relations with almost 20,000 manufacturers. We have over 1,000 uh, suppliers and vendors connected to the marketplace around Europe. We have 70 million items on the platform in total, and we are actively working in 14 different countries. Um, coming back to the general situation when we talk about indirect procurement, we have three different areas, but you cannot really solve the purchasing or procurement activity in the same similar way in all areas. And that's why we have different things. When we talk about core demand, it's a repetitively demand which is coming back every week, every day, whatever. Of course you have negotiation power and there you should negotiate because you can get very good prices. Make a framework agreement with your preferred supplier and make sure you utilize your power you hear from a negotiation point of view. When we talk about the long tail, the, the tail end span, you have nothing in your hands because you don't, need, you don't know what you are going to order tomorrow. So what should you negotiate? And this is a different story, a different pricing model, a different business model, and that's why we have a company like Mercatio, uh, because we are focusing on that. Um, usually we have a lot of statistics about costs and so on. I present to you some, some true figures. We, we onboarded a customer uh, who really, from day one, started to measure what's happening, actually, when, when you start a, a marketplace like this. They ramped up the orders last year, ending up a little bit beyond 300 orders over the Mercatio system last year. So it was a nice and, and smooth ramp up over the time, and when we look at the costs involved for the process, it's quite amazing. And this corresponds also very well with the figures we have from institutions around. So they placed 333 orders, which actually had a single cost every time of 90 euro. That's the total 
cost P2P from front to end until the invoice is paid. Due to the high variety of items they were ordering, if they would have used their old system, they would have had to add 170 new suppliers on the system, each costing them 800 euro to maintain on their SAP system. And if you start to sum up the whole thing, even if they started late, well, first quarter, late first quarter last year, the total savings is beyond 100,000 euros. That's money you can do a lot of better things for. So it's a lot of money involved in this kind of, of uh, marketplace business. So try to do your savings in the right time. <clears throat> it's even a nice statement on top. It's, it's a low value kind of item business we're talking. The process cost is almost as high as the item cost. And that's why you should really try to focus on that, get rid of that problem, and make sure you can focus on other more important topics. This is the question to you. Because these were, were the items they were ordering through Macatillo. So usually the customer doesn't even know what he's buying in the tail end because it's so fragmented and it's so diversified. So you really have to pin it down and say, okay, well, do I really buy these things? Yes, you do. And that's why it's so important that the marketplace has a very wide variety of goods and a very big depth with a lot of different items of the same kind. Then you can solve your tail and spend. Coming back to this, because the journey continues. We are not talking about a revolution, but we are talking about the evolution. And of course, when we talk about the long tail or tail end spend demand, a marketplace like Mercatio can do a fairly good job for you and release a lot of efforts in, and, and, and time inside the company. Hosting of customs, uh, customer catalogs, framework agreements, yes, we can take them on the system. We can have a true cross-catalog search. We can have priority for your frameworks and agreement and so on. We can set up the system the correct way. And then you have no problems. If you have a, a negotiated price for something, you will get the one. You will keep your customer or the, your vendor. If you are looking for a tail and spend, well, you have the uh, marketplace in the background. And you can, of course, use that for uh, serving that demand. But as you see, there is also a big area in the middle, the blue one. And that one has been neglected up till now. This is where you say, mm, it takes too much effort and too much time and too much cost to negotiate a framework agreement. But due to my big company and my good name, maybe I can get a little bit better prices anyhow, but just by saying I'm my name is that and that. And that's an area where we say, yes, you have a repetitive demand, maybe a special demand. You need a very specific supplier in the future, maybe even services. And this is the area we are trying to solve in the future. It's not really available yet, so it's an outlook into the future. But uh, we are going to set a new model, a network model on top of this which combines all three worlds together. That means that you can, of course, use your framework agreements, you can cover your tail and spend, but you can also have a one-to-one -one relation with some good suppliers which you rely on. And that is actually the upcoming thing. Um, this is the challenge we have all got in the future. We see it at home, we see it at work. We are diversifying when we talk about need because, well, you can standardize a pen, but does it really make sense? Everyone has his favorite. And would like to have his, his favorite pen because it's comfortable. So you have to organize the product variety in a simple way that it doesn't cost you any extra. And on the other hand, you need to build your relation and keep your relation with your partners, with your vendors and suppliers, but not over telephone, but in the future through a digital network. 
that is easy to handle and doesn't cost you any premium. That means that when you look at Mercatio today, we will split up the world, our world, into different things. Of course, we will keep the marketplace because it has a definite role in here. Because according to us, it's the only way to cover the tail end spend in a proper way. But on the other side, we are building a network as well to make sure that this blow part of the demand curve where you would like to have a relation with your suppliers. They are easily connected in a network that you can deal with them. You can have your one-to-one -one pricing and so on, and maybe a separate contract or whatever. And eventually, you will see how the marketplace moves down and also be a part of the network. Because this is only one part of the whole demand procurement procurement of the demand. So in the future, you will see us st still keeping the marketplace because it has a definite role here. And uh, also a lot of other uh, suppliers and vendors inside the whole network. So uh, conclusions. Um, if you haven't integrated a marketplace up till now, please do it, because it's late. The journey will continue. Um, we are talking about purchasing or procuring 1.0. We are now heading for 4.0. So uh, it's high time to really get the wheel spinning and, and uh, get your lessons uh, done and, and, and moving forward to do, uh, cover your tail and spend. Um, but if you have already done that, you will have a nice future because the journey will continue. We will try to cover a piece of your procurement which has not been covered before. And of course, there are a lot of customers saying, yes, framework agreements is good, as long as I get really good prices, but it costs me a fortune as well. So if I can minimize my framework agreements, but still keep a good relation with my suppliers, then I'm better off. And this is exactly what I'm trying to show you today, that this is the way we are going in the future. Well, we are out there on the exhibition. We, are, we would love to take your discussions, help you discuss, uh, recommend, a, recommend whatever you are looking for. So come and visit us, come and see us, come and talk to, with us. And uh, well, uh, it was a little bit quicker than it should be, uh, maybe, but that makes more time for questions and answers. So if you have any questions, well, please raise them, and I will try to answer them as good as I can. Yes? Uh, I suppose you don't want to give too much away, but how will your network marketplace um, be distinct from other if you back up uh, uh, 10 years, uh, Mercatio has always had one uh, philosophy. That means we are not having any kind of logistics. We are not even thinking about building up a logistics. We are relying on our very strong partners because that's their business and that's their understanding and that's their core business. So that means we are an intermediate partner in the food chain between the customer and the partners to make sure that we can, from a process point of view, run it in a lean and, and simple way. So this is a, a quite interesting distinct, uh, distinction here when we talk about the network. We will not go in conflict or in competition with our partners and vendors. We are only a way how to connect them to the customer in a proper way, an easy way. Is that the question, uh, answer to your question? Yeah, it's a good start. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next in my mind is, so what's the commercial advantage for you getting involved? Well, it, the cornerstone, the, 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 the um, marketplace will remain. And that, that's where we're making business. That, that's where we're earning money. The other thing is more a trans transactional kind of business. Uh, nevertheless, it's, it's very, very interesting because we are talking about a lot of transactions. Yeah. So, yeah. Well. Yeah, what is your economic model? Who pays? 
Well, uh, at the end of the day, customer always pays. No, <laughs> no lunch for free. Or, no, uh, uh, of course, we have a business model where you see the prices on, on the platform in the marketplace. It's the end prices. It's, it's exactly the prices you see on your invoice. Within that price, there is a small margin for Macateo as an a intermediate mer merchandiser between the customer and, and the supplier. So we have purchasing prices, we have selling prices. The good thing is, though, that all, all when we talk about the marketplace, uh, all uh, suppliers that are supplying the same item is in competition, open, transparent, fair competition with each other. They are all also treated exactly the same way from Macateo. We have no bias. We have no big owner in the back row. We are absolutely neutral. That means that everyone that understands his business can do the business through Macateo as a sales channel. And we have the same margin on all items in a certain range. In some ranges, we have very low margin because it's a very, very tough market. Other uh, categories, we might have a little bit more. Yeah, so if that is your answer. What's the presence in the UK? Uh, we are here since uh, four years. Uh, we have uh, four point something million items on the platform. Uh, most of the categories are there. Uh, it's definitely high time to start. Uh, I say the, the interesting level is when, when the marketplace have roughly three million items and, and we have some countries like Spain and, 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 and uh, uh, Switzerland for instance right now ramping up. We are not there yet so there it, it's an early adopter kind of business. In UK we are up and running and uh, it's of course I mean if you compare to our home country we are a German company uh, we have 22 million items on the German platform. You find everything. So uh, we are a little bit behind that, but we are moving forward. And we are happy to take on, if you have suppliers you would like to see on the market, uh, marketplace, please come to us, talk to us, recommend us, because that's making our both lives easier. How does the invoicing work? Is it from the supplier or is it from No, it's a pure one creditor model. And now we are back to the, the, the statement, the paradox. We are talking about, uh, minimizing number of creditors. If you're adding a marketplace like Mercatio, you have one creditor in, in, in uh, UK, we have hundreds of, of suppliers on the platform. That means you can start to offload creditors from your system. If you do it by a clean cut or if you do it over time, well, it's up to you. But, but uh, over the time, you will see a well, reduction of creditors on your system. Absolutely. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get all the data uh, from the system. You have an order archive on the system. If you are working with the R ERP system, you have all the data also on your system. Uh, you have complete overview. You remember the picture with a high variety of items. Today, you might even uh, not know what you are buying in this area because it's so so diversified. When you have the marketplace in the background. You have a full overview exactly how much you are buying in each category and what you are buying. So, so you have a full transparency of what you're doing and, well, and hopefully you're doing the right thing and the people are buying what they really need to have for the, their own per, per, Yeah. Yes, now, now we, are, we have to look into the business model. We are talking about real manufacturer, the manufacturer, article number, EIN number, but in the marketplace, we regard our partners and suppliers as logistic functions. So they are all called warehouse number, whatever. And that's because usually you have maybe five or 10 different suppliers supplying exactly the same item. And they are in competition to each other. <laughs> that means, and there is full dynamic on the platform. That means some suppliers even up, upload new price table every day, every hour. And that's okay. And that means if you order an item this morning and the same this afternoon, you might get it from two different suppliers. But you get the invoice from Macateo. 
And if it's something wrong, you call Makatio, not the supplier. So you have to change your mind from a supplier orienting thinking to a more manufacturing kind of thinking. It's an HP print cartridge and not ordered by that supplier. It's an HP product. So, well, you have to step back a little bit because most of the ERP systems, you are connecting your items to a supplier, not to the, to the original manufacturer. And now you have to go backwards again and say, this is the item. Who will deliver it? Well, it's depending on the price. Well, we believe that. That's, that's our philosophy because the, the, everyone can see the competition going on. All the suppliers see exactly their position on the system and they can change their position from hour to hour. And, and I think it's fair way because we are treating everyone exactly the same way. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and seeing the transparency mm -hmm. of the supply chain. Mm -hmm. So would you be able to provide um, uh, some sort of analysis of where things come from and, uh, and, and also adhere to maybe the, your clients' um, policy uh, in terms of the supply chain ethics? I think you're full, uh, fully correct on that point. Of course, we have a compliance here as well. In our old supply contract with all the suppliers, we have a... a, a com uh, compliance kind of part as well. They have to fulfill all the, what you believe is the right way of, of working today, you no know, child work and, and so on. Um, on the other hand, we are working with local partner. We are not importing things to sell here in the UK. We have no suppliers from, I don't know. So I would say to 95% all suppliers are located in the UK and they have to ful uh, fulfill the, the, the local uh, regulations and so on. So uh, we have no mixed business here, so we have very little risk exposure in that sense. And, and uh, when we talk about the major manufacturers, they are under pressure to, to fulfill these compliance roles as well, because they, it's UN uh, statement and an EU statement. So they are obli obliged to keep these compliance roles as well. So I think we're a little bit fine off here because we are very much localized. When we talk about these 14 countries, we select local suppliers in local language, not a English platform for everyone or a German one. So if you're having colleagues in other countries, they can work in their mother language all around these 14 countries. I'm here today. We are out there in the exhibition. If you have any question later on, come and see us, talk to us. And we are happy to set up a meeting with you, maybe in your office, and, and we can go through all the details and make sure that we can sort out all the open questions. So, yes, please feel welcome to see us. Thank you very much for your attention, and have a good day. <laughs>